Hello and good day to you. Today's video, we are demonstrating the use of photographic images in making a topper in our digital craft technique of 12 crafts of card making. For this project, we will need a photographic image, digital, graphic software, I'm using Inkscape software, printer to print the card if you desire. I'll just, I've already opened my software. I'll close it and work. So I've opened my software. Just close one because I have two tabs. Click on file. I'm going to work in landscape and thus, um, and this is a portrait, A4 landscape and this A4 portrait. So click on file, new, and you can choose the size you want to work with here. So I'll click on A4 landscape. And here it is. Select it rectangle tools to create rectangles and square and if you notice it shows that you can um, press F4 to do that the shortcut appears to with it so I'm just gonna drag across I don't need a stroke or node I don't need a stroke so uh, it's already filled but if you need a stroke you go down here to the um, tab bar at the bottom, you see fill and stroke, you click on it and a menu appears, a window appears with information. Then you can go if you want to close the stroke or if you want to use a fill, you can use it. If you want to close the fill, you can close here. You can make use of it if you want to make use of it. So I'll just select another color for my fill. Or I can use the undo button. Let me use this one. I'll close it. Click on the select and transform object tool to select your shape. We are working on, we are working in the metric we are working in is centimeters. So I'm going to change it to centimeters, my measurement. On this tab bar here, you have the width, the height, the X and Y axis. So I'm going to go to the width and height and I'm going to change the height to, I'm going to change the width height to work in centimeters, everything to work in centimeters. So on the width, I'm going to make it um, 29.7 and the height is going to be 21 that's the measurement for a landscape a for landscape for an a for landscape so here we have our shape all right click on this and duplicate many appear duplicate I'm going to fill the duplicate with a different color so I'm going to take claret red, a very dark red. I can just drag along since I'm not using them, um, since I, I want it to resize to one side. I just can just drag along, then I'll change the measurement here to make sure it fits what I want. So I've just dragged to, towards the right because this is going to be the inset and this is going to be the front of the card the inside of the card is inside of the card so i'll select this duplicated shape the one we just scaled to the right and i'm going to make it the weight 19 centimeters it's going to be an offset kind of card we'll create it here and then we'll create it's in a handmade fashion. So 
so here we have the other shape i'm going to turn this base shape like the let me say the base a4 cardstock i'm going to turn to a very faint gray light gray so that um it not disturb our work So this is the remaining part we're going to we're going to fold this uh, remaining side showing of the a4 in but it's going to be somewhere here so let's do that i'm going to duplicate the gray and i'll fill it with a different color so just scroll along on the bar and maybe fill it with green let me fill it with green you can just resize it to this to make it match just pull on the tools that's the um on the border the selection to just drag it to where you want it to be or you can use measurements to like the way it is here so i'm just going to get the calculator now we've removed you know um the it's 29.7 the width of the main card is 29.7 so if we've removed 19 it's going to be 10.7 so the width of this green is going to be 10.7 so we'll make it we'll come here and make sure the green is selected that this small tab we are going to work on is going to be 10.7 So here it is. Okay, we didn't shift it properly. When we, I'm gonna shift it because I was wondering. Okay. All right. So we have the ten point seven. I've moved it. So I'm going to okay, it's lined properly now. We have the ten point seven. If you want to, you can just shift it in. This is how it's going to be. This card has been as if this card is has been scored. So it's going to be an offset card. You can see it as a front of a card if you want to. It's optional. But this is going to be our offset. Then this is going to be the inner one. So on this in the inner one, before we start, I'm going to duplicate and just move okay sorry i'm going to duplicate right click on it let me go back to undo right click on the inner card the larger shape card larger rectangle right click and click on duplicate i'm going to change the color to white then we just move it take the handle of from um, the handle of the border and just move it towards the right going to then move to create a rectangle thin rectangle or like a ribbon border now we have that i think this one is all right you can move from left to right if you want to and i'm going to duplicate on that ribbon border I'm going to make the right click on it to duplicate and we're going to fill it we just click on the color when it's selected I'm going to click on it I'm going to use blue let's use blue we're still going to change the colors when we bring the topper in so that it corresponds with the topper so we can right click again to duplicate on the blue and fill it with a light co lighter color and just uh, make it very thin but so you can use a stripe ribbon if you want to so you can use um cardstock i'll be using cardstock so here's our top our topper sorry our flap to give us the offset shape so we've selected this the inner part and we've just left it like that First of, okay, let's um, select this um, select this ribbon, and we can go to object and group to group them so that they don't move. When they move, all moves together. 
they move together. If you want to create a border inside, that's optional. I'm going to make it a blank card, so I don't need to make a border inside. So we'll make the border on top, just flap. Normally when you fold the flap, this is going to be from the back of side of the card coming to the front now. There's a, oh, there's a front, there's a back. So the front makes the inner while the back, flap from the back being turned towards the front makes the flap to create the offset. Did I say offset single fold? That's good. Okay, we're going to take the offset part and duplicate. I'll fill it with a lighter shade color. Here we can use the... We need to create um, a, a thin border. So I'll use the shift key on my keyboard, press it down and just drag. It's going to create a thin border because it's going to make the border, any how I drag it, any way I drag it, it's going to create a thin border or it's going to make it a bit wider. So I'm going to make sure it gives me a proportional border. Okay, now I have a nice border with using the shift key and dragging your mouse. I'll fill it with white. Then I'll duplicate it, the white, duplicate again, and fill it with um, blue. So with my eyedropper tool here, click on, if you can't find it, just click on this double arrow at the end of the toolbar. You see it, paint bucket, gradient, dropper tool, connector. So I'll take on the eyedropper tool. With the white selected, the duplicate of the white selected, I'm going to click on this blue here with my eyedropper tool and it's going to fill it with blue. Pressing my shift key down, I'm going to now, if, if to make it thinner, to make it wider, so just want the thin but I don't want it to take everything. So here we are. If you have your measurement, you can just click on it and insert your measurement here. Just going through a shortcut. So now we have a um, card. As if it, um, it's being turned, that's going to be the card when we put it on in the front. So we need, sometimes graphics software to crash. So let me save this first. File, save in an Inkscape file. So I'll say save or save us. It's going to pop. Then I will say topper card or oh, photographic, photographic topper card. And it's, the safe type is Inkscape SVG. If you have other software like Affinity, it can open it. Open it. Make sure I create it within the page. Even if you don't create it within the page, it's still going to open it in the page. But you see it, even if it's above the page, it's still going to open it. And you can um, use your to, you can use your cursor to drag in the borders. And so save in case it crashes. <laughs> That's what I'm saving. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to bring our topper. So we're gonna work with our topper now. We'll go to file, import. Some people do just open the topper, and just go to open the topper, like file, open to open the top, to locate the topper and open it. Then the copy it in, it's going to open in another um, heading or uh, page. Then they copy it in, right click on copy and they'll paste it onto it. But I want it in here, so I'm going to go click on File, Import. Locate the folder that is in. So this is my folder, and I'm going to just pick on one. Trying to get a nice image. Okay, I think I'll go with this Hollyhocks here. And when the pops, then you click on embed. So 
that even if you delete it from that from that folder it's already in your file here so embed is all right you click on ok it's a large file so it's going to cover our work but we'll have to resize it If I see about 350 DPI because of the camera I used in taking the picture. So you see it has covered our work. I'll just move it to the side. And here you can see our page very small. And here's the picture, very large. So to resize it, to make it in proportion without it skewing to the left or to the right, because I don't want it to skew, you're going to press your control key down. This is why I'll just before then let me explain this take the if i take the rectangle to let me click on 5c first <laughs> in case anything happens okay you take the rectangle to i'm going to put a shape here and then uh, go to centimeters here we have it it's already um it's a square that i just drew surprising and i didn't even press any pass so i'll duplicate the square i'll make this one um red and i'll duplicate this one and make this one green if you use the shift key for this press the shift key it's going to resize from any side the, we are the force of moving it, moving this um, border, border um, pages is going to move. You can see it. Let me zoom in so that you see. I'm doing this for first timers. If you press the shift key down on your keyboard and you move these arrows, it's going to if depend on where you move it from you can see that it's resizing from both sides okay then if you press it from if you drag it sorry <laughs> if you press a shift key and you drag it from um, the upper this diagonal arrows here is going to reduce it from both the up and the down you see it's going to give you we're going to reduce it from all four sides so if you press if you press your shift key down and you drag the arrows from the top is going to reduce it you're going, you're going to read the top and the bottom so this red one we're going to use the control key if you press the control key and you drag it it's going to be proportional it will still be a square by the end but with the shift key it's going to turn it into a rectangle so here is the main shape that we did so here if you look at your measurement here using the control key is proportional you see have it eight nine six five centimeter square but here using the blue one if you click on the blue one you find out that the weight is higher in um, metric the height is lower if we still use it down the same shift key we can we'll find out that the height moves then if we move it so we use the shift key where we want to resize all sides but we want to keep it in proportion we use the control key it differs in softwares that's what i've noticed so you have to use the so when you open the graphic software you have to find out which is which which works in that particular software okay so we'll go to this and to keep it in proportion i'm going to press my control key down and drag it from this diagonal handle here until it's small enough okay that's all right and then we'll zoom our page and here we have it it's in proportion it's not skewed to the left or to the right going to take it off that side okay. we need a shape so i'm going to create a shape here i think i'll use um an ellipse shape or over 
with this square because I need some part. I'm going to match ellipse to ellipse with a square. Okay, let's form that shape. I'll just move this one up a little and click on save. Now we've saved our work. We need to continue clicking on save because sometimes it, this software will crash. Mm -hmm. It's a very nice software. I've been using it for a long time. I just drag across. If you have a definite size, you can tell it the size. You can just impute the size. But now I don't have, but I can use this as a guide. That's why I created a card first. When I put my topper, I want it to go over to this. Um, I want to go over to the in an offset. I want it to go over onto the insert, the other part of the insert showing on top. All right, so here we go. And I'm going to, okay, let me click another color I'll click a red and then drag so that it will be I'm not pressing any of the key, any sh um, key on the keyboard I'm just going to drag we don't need to move any if you want to you can you move any of the nodes here but if you move this second node is a closed node if you move it's going to open so we need it closed If you've made a mistake and you you just close it up here and it will close. You just use any of the shapes here, but I use a closed one. So what we're going to do, I'm going to just resize it. Okay, that's nice. Then I'll right click and duplicate this over. Then on the menu bar here, on the, sorry, on the menu bar tab bar, I'm going to rotate clockwise. I just want it 90 degrees. So here it is. Mm. This thing has to be longer. So I'm going to delete this first. I'm going to make this longer. It has to be longer. And if you want to keep it proportional as you are uh, re resizing one side, instead of resizing one, resizing the other, you can click on the shift key. So I'm going to do, go to duplicate again and rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Now I can reduce this one if I want to. Okay, and reduce the size if I want to. Or I can use the shift key. Alright, this is alright. I think I move this one. It's not compulsory for you to resize with the shift key. You can just resize one side. You are the designer and you can do whatever you want. That shows your uniqueness. Right, so I'm going to select all together and um, just place it and see if I like the way it's going to be. Okay, that's fine. All right. Stay selected, everything together. Go to path, then click on union and it becomes one whole shape. So this is how you create different geometric shapes. Just go to union, part union, and it creates you put the shapes together and you can create unique shapes. So here we go. I can also because since I've placed it and now it's coming out, I want to clip on it. But it's coming out, it's not really nice. Let me see. I want to reduce this to the actual size that is to be. So I'll put my control key down and I'll reduce it to what I want it to be. So this is how it's going to be. Okay. So let me see. Mm. 
Okay. I mistakenly selected the two. <laughs> so um the ribbon on it. So press my control key down and resize it. And I can also skew it a little using my shift key. Okay, that's fine. I have a unique shape, the one I want. And I can make it um I can make it any type any i can rotate it to fit any size i want so being rotated yeah that's fine it's gonna be nice okay so i'll just duplicate this one i'm going to work with this click on save to save <laughs> okay Before we start, um, make before we clip our shape, I would like to feel do my feeling that I want to change the colors to nice colors that I intended in. So just click on the color, select the color that I the shape that I need, to, and the toolbar, select the dropper tool, and click. I would make this one because it's um. You are seeing it digital. I want you to see the dimension. So I'm going to click on that. Just use my selection to um eyedropper tool to select a very faint color there. Although the card base is going to be cream, I'm working with. So select any of them, use the dropper tool. Oh, okay, I forgot. <laughs> I didn't undo. I grouped it last time. So even if I don't want to ungroup it, I can just go with this edit node path. Path, sorry, edit node path two. Click on it. This arrow with um, some squares around it. Click on it, and it select a particular one for me. So I need you to select this. Select the eyedropper too, and I can pick a color, I'll pick a green. Then with the no, no tool again, edit path, I'll select um, a pink or what? Okay, I can select a white, just select a white. And then I'll select um, a pink. Let me select a pink. Okay, dust the pink. That's fine. So I'll do same here. I'll be fast about this other one. Same process. I'm going to select a green, dark green. That's all right. Then I'll select a um, uh, dust pink. I'll use the same dust pink. Just go there. So I need to create a border with this one before I clip it. Before I clip the image. So I'm going to select for the border. I'm going to like and pick. Which color should I use first? Mm. Mm. I'm going to pick a then pick a green. Okay, then duplicate. I'll pick a white. I've, okay. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to right click on the shape, duplicate it. Press my shift key. Okay, fill it with white. Sorry. Press my shift key, and I want a nice border. I'm going to use this diagonal. I'm going to use this diagonal arrow here. Press my shift key and drag so that I will have a nice border. Click into the white, duplicate, fill with a different color so that I will know. Then I'll press my shift key and use this diagonal handle here to drag it to make a nice border. 
Then I'll select a pink, duplicate, fill it with another color. Press the shift key and drag to create lines. So this white one, the inner white one, or let me pick a gold so that do not confuse. This inner gold one is the one we're going to use to clip this um, uh, photographic image. So I'll just make you see the full screen. I'll duplicate it and then I'll put it in here. I'm going to first of all rotate it sideways because of the design is um, I'm going to rotate it. I just rotated it um, 90 degree clockwise because of the design. Then we can rotate it to whatever we desire. So press the control key on your keyboard. Select the photo. Sorry, select the photographic image. Press the control key on your keyboard and then you resize. Let's resize into proportion. Make sure that the shape is not coming out of this um, photographic image because here it's going to be transparent when we clip it. So you don't want that. So make sure it's not coming. So I'm going to make sure it's not coming out. I'll press the shift key and resize a bit. So now we have it. I don't mind some of them cutting out, but if you do mind of some of the shape cutting out, you can as well resize it again. You can just uh, move it to whatever it's that to cover it. You are the, remember you are the designer, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it the way it is. What I want, even if it cuts out, if it cuts, yes, I'm all right with it. So select both, just drag your cursor across the photographic image and the shape on it. And the shape should be on top. Then go to objects, the toolbar sorry the menu bar go to object clip and clip set and you have your shape in it so i'm going to drag it down a bit and then we'll see our shape so now you have your shape it's been clipped so now you have your shape is being clipped i'm going to put it in so this um is going to take the part of this um gold so i don't want in case i don't line it up properly but i'm going to try and line it up properly, just to make sure the gold don't start appearing because there's no gold in my design i can fill this this gold design with this pink because the pink is the one the layer before this Can even alter the layers. Why don't I alter it to white? Let me fill it first if I don't like it. So since it's on top, okay, it's at the bottom because we created the we brought in the image before created the topper. You can now click on the image, the the image topper and say object menu bar, click on object, raise to top, and it comes above. Rotate. 90 degree clockwise or 90 degree um counterclockwise so depends on what you want i'll say clockwise then you line it remember there's a thin border of uh, pink before it then you can line it the way you want it to be so that it fits properly So here we have our nines border. Select all of them together by dragging your mouse across the three of them and go to object and group. So here's our card. 
I'm going to remove this green one and default I'll just click on C first <laughs> let's save the work okay then I'll take the topper I'll place it on top so it's a blank card offset blank card single fold we are going to do what so let's see it I want to fill the screen a bit let's see if I can So it's a single fold blank card. You can remove this um, gray if you want to, but I'm not. Can remove it? Let's remove it. So I see our card. So this is a single fold blank card. That's how it's going to be. When we score the card, we fold it. This is going to be when we make it handmade. So if you want to print, I'm going to put this aside. If you want to print your card, I'm going to print the topper. So I'll duplicate. I'll duplicate the stopper. It's not creating errors. Okay. Click on save. I'll duplicate the topper. So if I want to print, I'll duplicate this topper and okay, right click on the topper to duplicate and then we move this one aside. We can group this. I'll just put a object group just to and as I said, save often. Then you can put your toppers. You can even make it two or so. Put one inside on the flap inside. Or the, whatever you want. You can make it two, to make maximum. So we're going to print two on the A4 sheet. If you want, where's that? Uh, let me look for it. That's my A4 shape. Okay. I can bring that one in here. And fill it with white. Okay. Then I'll select this. I mean, by means. Then I'll select them together. The A4. Have, this is the top we're going to print for our handmade card. All these other sh um, color blocks, we'll use color cards for them. You will say go to file, export bitmap, a window pops with information. You click on selection. We're not, se we're not exporting the full page. So we click on selection. And since you are printing, you can use 300 DPI. But if we are going to like upload it into a blog, 100 DPI is all right. So then you click on browse and you get your the folder you are going to store it in it says in PNG here I'm going to write photographic card stopper photographic topper card I'm going to put a for oh <laughs> a for print okay I can leave that and I'll just click on save then after that you have to click on export leave the other two on check and it exports it now you have a nice print table for um, your topper I'm going to close this and I'm going to save because there's something else I want to show you so 
So you see we have our topper. I can group this that's so that they don't move object group so that a single. Okay. Now we have our toppers and we have our card shape that we are going to build. But if you are going to print if you are going to print, go to, let me use this one object and group. I right click and duplicate on this to use it so that I don't need to build another one. Now go back to group this. So the same A4. Mm, size sheet. I'm using this as my for size sheets. You want to So if you need to print, this is going to be the. the if you want to print, this is the front of the card. So I'm going to click on duplicate. This is in front of the card. You you will need to print this together like so. Then on this other side, the back, you have to create a back too. So that you print on duplex. Then you can select this And put it on the back. So that when you fold it, this is going to be the back. So that when you fold it, it's going to appear in the front. This is the back and this is the front. So on the back, is going to be on this side. So that when you fold it, it comes on top and form the card like this. You see, my image has disappeared because the memory is kind of slow. Sometimes it just sucks. But because I've saved, it's already in there. So here it is. I just closed the work and reopened it again. Because I've saved my, you know, when we were designing the image, it just went off this one. But because I've saved, it's um, already in there. That's why it's good to save up. Because it's a very large file. So if you are going to print, this is how you're going to print. Then you use duplex. Um, after that, you score. Make, you can make a thin border when you're scoring this one. You can make a very thin border to score for the score line. You don't need to design the border here. You just, um, when you finish printing, you just score close to it and you bend forward. It forms your card. So let's meet on the work surface. We will make this handmade greeting card. We are now on the work surface. And to make the topper for our greeting card, to make our greeting card, we need a card, card base. I'm using white, I've already printed the logo. You can see it, I've printed the logo. I'm using a pre-printed card that I've done before. We need our printed topper. We need cardstock for layering. A for A for cardstocks. So I've cut from this because um, I did some pre uh, cuts. Um, you need green, white, and uh, pink, or the color to coordinate your topper. We need a scoreboard. This is the big score. It's an eight risk scoreboard by um, Crafters Companion, the big score. On one side you have um, the inches and on the other side you have um, the centimeters. So I'll be using the centimeters. You need a scoreboard and it's in scoring two. 
you need liquid glue and you need a um, scissors if you desire you can also use some um, foam pads but today i'm not going to use foam pads that's uh, three uh, double-sided foam pads you need them um, a guillotine or a paper trimmer i'll be using paper trimmer side of it so now i've placed my card it's gonna fall to the front that means i want to score it on the um, oh this is the centimeter size okay so I'm going to score it. I said um, when we are designing, I said 19 centimeters. So I'm going to score it here. Okay. I'll let it rest. Let me put this aside a little. I'm going to let it rest to the left hand side of the board so that I don't move. And I'm going to score only 19 centimeters groove. Let's score it down. Now the uh, logo is supposed to be me to here, but I'm using one I've printed for another project. And uh, then we'll fold the flap forward, crease it, use the folder, bone folder to crease it properly or burnish it. And here you have, um, here we have a cap. Single fold, but it's offset. Or should I say offset single food? Uh, okay. Alright, we need to layer our cards inside. Uh, we we'll have to cut sheets from the green, white, and pink and then layer it inside because we're going to that's the insert and I want it blank. If you want in if you want uh, to put words inside versus inside or versus inside then you will print you need to print it first so I've, there's one i have already pre-cut this one because here is 19 centimeters i've i pre-cut this one to be 18. i removed um one inch sorry one centimeter from the cardstock so if you put them to the one side, you notice one centimeter gone. So that when I arrange it, on the, ve on the vertical I removed one centimeter and on the horizontal I removed one centimeter. So when you get the measurement of your main base card the inside, you remove one centimeter from the vertical and one centimeter from the horizontal. Then you arrange so that when you arrange it, you're going to have five um 0 0.5 centimeters border all around that's dividing it yes you divide that one centimeter by two one centimeter by two so you have it mm. i'm learning a little bit of math it's just because uh, you divide it by two <laughs> and it's almost a, it's a round uh, number you see So I've done the same and we have um so I'm going to layer this quickly. Let me not work on the because of glue, I'm not working on my and I'll finish with that. Remember, don't put too much glue towards the end of the card because you don't want it to smear out. So, yeah. And don't put that, just make it adequate because <laughs> you don't want the edge to lift if you don't put close to your, the edge of the card, the edges going to lift okay now i have um, have to work fast because we we need to cut others
So now we've finished um, the inside of the card. I, as I said earlier, it's going to be a blank card. If not because of the technique we are demonstrating, it's just topper. If you want to cut the image and layer it here or print it with an image, we'll do that when we are doing other designs. Sorry, other technique. Okay. So I'll put it aside. We need to cut. We need to cut for the front of the card. So I've already pre-cut pre -cut this one, sorry. I've already pre-cut the green for the front of the card. I'm going to cut from the white, pink and the white. So on this measurement here, let me use this. I'm not cutting it, I'm just going to, to measure. This is about 10.5. This flap here is about 10.5. So I made this one 9.5. As I said earlier, I cut one, one, um, one inch. Oh, sorry. What am I saying inch? I cut one centimeter of the horizontal and one centimeter of the vertical. So if this one is 9.5 on the horizontal, And on the vertical, because um, the it's a, an A4 card, it means it's on 21, so I cut it on 20 centimeters. So now this pink, I'm going to cut it on, on the long side. On the long side, I'm going to cut it on... I'm going to cut it on 19. Let me find 19. Okay, here it is. Then I'm going to cut it on 19. Then on the short side, since I cut this one on 9.5, I'm going to cut it on. Um, let me see. <laughs> I have to see another good one. Okay. No, I like this edge. 9.5 is going to be on 8.5. Okay. Okay. So, let me see if I'm right. Ah. <laughs> okay, I am. So, I'll take a white one now. And I'll cut this white one. Oh, what did I do now? <laughs> on the long side, I'm going to cut it on... Um, if this one was cut on 20, this one was cut on 20, this is cut on 19, this one will be cut on 18, right? Let me check first. <laughs> how do these mathematicians, how do they do it? They just remember the figures. Yeah, I have to struggle. <laughs> Okay, cut on 18 and then this 8.5 I can hear I can remember this well I cut this on 8.5 so I'm gonna cut this on 7.5 like this nice edge here so I'm gonna cut it on 7.5 okay. So we've done that. I think we're through with that. And let me see if I did the right thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I did it right. <laughs> okay, let's glue. Put the white on the pink, pink on the green. Oh, wrong side. Okay, it's not wrong. So you're not writing on it. Let 
The good thing about liquid glue is that when you can move it around before it dries. I have a little glue here, so I'm going to just clean it. Then I'll put the pink on the green. I do put on the smaller side of the card because I want it. To, I want it to go exactly where I want it to be on. If not, it's going to smear, and uh, I don't want that. I want the exact. Because if I put it on the green, I won't know. It's supposed to be when I put the pink on, except I mark it and I don't want to mark. So now we have that, I'm going to place it on this. Let me take this. So I'm going to place it. To glue the green, and I can line it up because it's the same measurement um, in. The same one centimeter off so i can line it up with this um the insert here okay now we need to cut our topper i'll put this aside and cut trim our topper here's the topper just going to cut this one i think i need to clean my print midline Because oh, the printer is on a hard card, so I'm going to place this. I can place it on top and just trim around. Mm -hmm. Make it hard weight. I like the borders, so I'm not going to trim the borders out. So I'm going to cut around the border. Not to cut double. I'm going to place glue at the back and glue it through a heavy weight card. Let me use a white for that. I think I have one extra white card here. Okay. I forgot I printed it on um, a lightweight card. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place it because I like the borders and I don't want to add another edge to it. So I'm going to glue it. I'm going to place, put glue, and then glue it to a, hard, um, a card of 350 grams because it's a topper. If you want, um, if you want borders, you can add borders. I already have borders here and I love the borders. I don't want to add any one. I would have preferred to use gold, but uh, I don't want to use any other border like this one let me try and minimize um, the card okay. so i'm gonna cut together
okay here yeah, I've already cut the border it's heavy weight now because I layered it on um, a heavy weight card and I'm going to I can place it any the way I want I can place it like so or like so And place it like this. So I'm going to place it like so. That's the inside is the flap. And because I'm going, I'm going to place it, and some part of it will be. If you notice, some parts are going. Some parts will be appearing over the insert, and to insert, and to make that. Um. To make sure that the glue don't go over it, or that we don't shut close our insert we're going to make we're going to put the glue on only one part some people just place it and mark but i'll put it on only on just a few because um, okay just do some dots i'm not going to even go into half of it place it if you open it there's no glue on this side if we are do demonstrating um, embellishment te the technique of um, embellishment would have used ribbons would have used them um, different uh, maybe pearls or something to bring the card lights so we're just demonstrating topo techniques photographic card that's why we're doing simple cards Thank you for joining me for this video of 12 crafts of card making the technique of digital craft a focus on photographic card used as a topper in this greeting card on today happy crafting you can visit the blog and in ogunjobi.com to keep up and or see what's happening in the crafting industry have fun bye for now So here's our topper. You can see. Put it right the words a blank card to so we'll use we'll right inside. And here we have it. We've used 300 grams of card, so it's heavy weight. <laughs>